Welcome to the Fundamentals of Digital Photography. My name is John Gringo and we've got a fantastic class for you. So if you are excited, if you love photography, there's going to be tons of stuff in here for everyone. Now, the name of this class is kind of indicative of what is in the class. And the idea is that you're going to be learning about the tools and the techniques that at least I think every photographer should know about. So whether you're shooting family pictures, or you're doing travel photography, or you're working in a studio, there's just a wide gamut of things that even though you don't use on a daily basis, it's good to have a nice broad knowledge of, of all of photography so that you can talk with a competent mind to your, to your customers and to your friends and everyone else. And so you can explore different types of photography as well. And this class is not labeled as a beginner class. If you are a beginner, this is like the perfect place to be. Um, because we're going to be going through all the basic things, shutter speeds, apertures, ISOs. But if you're a little bit more advanced, everyone has some experience and some you know, have a little bit more than others. And this class is going to have a little bit more in depth than I think most other classes have. And we're going to get into some more sophisticated uh, topics. So we've got some, some fun stuff planned in this class that you know, for, for the beginners, it might go over their head a little bit at first. Um, and that's why it's sometimes helpful to watch this class maybe after six months of playing around with the camera. Watch it once and then learn and then you come back and when you view it again you start picking up another layer of information. Uh, I, I teach this class or at least versions of this class on a regular basis and actually just yesterday I was teaching uh, part of this class and I had a student in my class who was a quote-unquote professional photographer. She made at least some part of her living shooting portraits but she had been so concentrated on marketing and finding clients and working with them and the business end, she kind of left the whole technical end out dry for quite a while and she says I needed to kind of shore up my knowledge and she was just totally surprised at how much stuff she didn't know that she thought would be very helpful in what she does and so almost no matter what level you are there's going to be something in here for you. Now I've been doing photography for just about my whole life and I've just had this huge fascination with it and I've been trying to pin down what is it that's so cool about photography? And I think there's a lot of things and it depends on who you are. And, but I came up with one little, I don't know, understand, help, helps me understand why I think it's so interesting. When you look at a photograph, how long does it take you to decide whether you like it or not? Usually about one second. You can tell instantly if it's a good photograph or a bad photograph. And when you look at a good photograph, you might think, well, they just went click. I mean, that's all we photographers do, right? That, that's, that's the only qualification for being a photographer is just click. And so you look at a good photograph and you go, well, that's good. And all the photographer did was click. That must be easy. And you go out and you shoot pictures and you're like, my pictures are terrible. Why is that? It seems so easy to get good results for other people. Why is it so difficult for me? And I'm, I'm thinking about of my personal favorite photographs. What led up to that photograph? What did I have to do directly, not just indirectly like learning something in a classroom, but what did I do directly to get that good photograph? And I would say I probably spend on average about an hour in preparation. Maybe I'm scouting, I'm shooting test pictures, I'm setting up lights, I'm taking kind of preliminary shots and then I take a secondary shot and it's not till the hundredth shot that I finally get the one that's really good. And so I probably spend about an hour per shot. I know in some pictures I spend much, much more. Uh, in some pictures, yeah, I get a little lucky and I come across them a little bit more quickly. But there's a lot of work that goes in before the picture's taken. And that's a lot of what this class is going to talk about. Uh, the knowledge on how to set up your camera, what tools you can use, and a lot of other things. And so that's what we're going to be doing in this class is I want you to have a really strong foundation of photography knowledge. And I'd like to give you just a little bit of a preview of what we're going to be doing because this is not a 10-minute YouTube video on how to take perfect pictures. That, this is, you are totally rock, watching the wrong thing if you want to learn photography in 10 minutes. This is a fairly long class and we're going to explore these subjects very much in depth. So let's take a quick look at the different sections because we have 10 different sections in this class. And this, uh, this first section is going to be a bit of an experiment. This is the first time I've ever done this with Creative Live, it's called Seven Steps to Great Photographs. Now obviously we're going to have seven steps and it's kind of the thought process that I and I think many other photographers go through. What do you think about first when you're trying to take a picture? Okay, once you got that down, what do you do next? And kind of the, uh, 
The special catch on this talk is that it is completely jargon-free, no technical talk. So I'm sorry if you want to get into shutter speeds and apertures, it's not really a topic here. This is going to be a topic for anyone at any level, whether you're shooting with an iPhone or an 8x10 camera, these are the same issues that everyone addresses when they're taking photographs. So I think it's, it also serves as a really good primer for the rest of the class because we're going to see some of, the other, some of these other photographs later on in the class and I'll be explaining kind of the technical behind the scenes on how they were made. Section two is all about the camera. So we're going to talk about the different types of DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. We're going to talk about things in the camera itself, like the shutter and the shutter speeds. And we're going to have a long talk about different shutter speeds so that you know everything you need to know about them. And then about some of those other settings in your camera that you need to know about, RAW versus JPEG and things like that. Section three is all about the sensor. You know, I was thinking if this class took place 20 years ago, if we could have had a class like this 20 years ago, which I wish we had because I would have loved it. Um, we're gonna, we, it would have been called film, but now we need to talk about the sensor. We're going to talk about different sensor sizes. We're going to talk about the pixels on the sensors, how many pixels you need to make a good picture. And then we're going to talk about how to set your ISO on your camera and strategies and kind of procedures for where you want to have your ISO set in different times. Section number four is the lens. This is definitely one of my favorite sections. We're going to be looking at lots of different lenses. Hopefully we're going to have a bunch of different lens examples in here. Uh, we're going to be talking about angle of view and aperture and depth of field and then probably what I'm most excited about is a whole new section on tilt shift lenses and so I actually recently got my first tilt shift lens and I've been playing with it because I've been wanting to have a nice little segment on it so even if you know I know 99% of the photographers don't own a tilt shift lens some of you might rent one or borrow one but I think they're fascinating and they're really interesting and I got a nice little segment so you want to stay tuned in for that one Section number five is on exposure. So we're going to talk about how the light meter in the camera works. Um, we're going to talk about different metering modes. We're going to explain how histograms work and what to look for. Then we're going to get into the exposure modes and we're going to take the knowledge that we've learned about aperture, shutter speed, and ISO and we're going to start putting it together so you can start figuring out how do I balance all of these things when I want to take a picture. Section six is on focusing. This is actually another one of my favorite sections. We're gonna be talking about all the different things in the camera to help you focus, from choosing focusing points, to different focusing modes. We're gonna talk about lens sharpness and how to get maximum depth of field and minimum depth of field. And there's a lot of things going on involved in focus. And focus is the one thing in your camera that you do out in the field that you absolutely have to get right. There is no computer software that is going to fix an out of focus picture. I mean there's some things that make it just like 1% better uh, but if you screw this up, up out in the field there is no recovery other than going to reshoot it and sometimes that's not possible so you got to have this nailed down. Next up is light. Obviously very important to photographers. We're going to talk about different types of light, how they affect the pictures that you shoot. We're going to talk about modifying the light with pretty simple devices. We're not going to get into a big studio setup here. We're going to be using mostly, for the most part, just on-camera flashes, uh, your standard Nikon or Canon flashes and what you can do with them to get interesting and nice results. Section eight is the gadget bag. So we're going to be talking about all those little toys. And I think this is a lot of people's favorite section because we're going to be talking about filters and tele extenders, close-up accessories, tripods, flashes, and a few other little things in there that you might have questions on. So this is kind of the grab bag of everything else in the class. Section 9 and section 10 are essentially one big section. The first part of it, we're going to be dealing with point of view, angle of view, cropping, panorama, and there's going to be a little bonus section in here on time lapse as well. And like any good fireworks show, they we're going to have a lot of pictures at the end. So we're going to have tons and tons of pictures uh, in this section. So there'll be lots of ways for you to learn just from looking at my mistakes. In section 10, the second half of composition, we're going to be talking about subject placement, you know, the good old rule of thirds, and many other concepts beyond that. We're going to be using sharpness to control composition. And then we'll be talking about elements of design. And so that's an idea of what we're going to be covering in this class over the next several days for those of us here who are watching it live. And so, uh, so photography is something that I have been involved with since I was 10 years old. I was out on a bike ride with my family and I found a camera on the side of the trail. I picked it up and I brought it home and I, 
I wondered so much what was on that roll of film. And I'll never know because I took it out, I threw it away, and I bought a brand new roll of film and I started taking pictures. And I took pictures through high school, and when I got into college, I needed to take an art class. And I wasn't the most arty type guy in the world, and so photography seemed like a good way to get it, my art credits in. And I took one photography class, and I was totally sold. I said, that's what I got to do. And so I ended up getting a degree from Oregon State University in photojournalism, and I graduated to a terrible economy, and nobody was hiring. <laughs> And so I was looking hard and fast for a job, and I just could not, nobody was hiring. And so I ended up picking up a job in a camera store. And worked in the camera store a little longer than I expected, uh, but something that occurred during that time, and I didn't even realize it at the time, is that I was learning how to teach photography in 10-minute increments. And I got very good at dealing with wide levels of photographers from people who were like, well, what's this thing here? Well, that's the lens. Uh, who didn't know anything about cameras to people who were hardcore professionals who came in and needed uh, equipment. And so got a lot of practice doing that. And the other advantage was, was that I got to pursue my own photography projects, which is good for anyone, uh, to have your own little passion uh, outlet in photography. And one of the things that I did is I went on adventurous travels and I would take pictures. And my buddy and I, just for instance, we went to Iceland and we did a six-week bicycle trip around Iceland. We came back and we put all our pictures into a slideshow and we presented it at the local outdoor store and with the bicycle groups and a, very, a number of other places. And so we kind of got used to speaking in front of public and talking about photography. And that led to a job working with Art Wolf. A lot of you will know he's a very famous wildlife, landscape, travel photographer. And I got hired to help him and his TV crew work on the show Travels to the Edge. And so I got to travel all around the world to really, honestly, just the coolest places in the world. We were in several countries in Africa. We were in India. We went to Antarctica. We were up in Alaska with the grizzly bears. It was just lots and lots of fun. And there's tons of photos in this class from that experience. Well, the economy tanked again, and so I had to figure out something to do because the TV show lost funding. And at the time, he had a classroom. And so I started teaching a class. And I went to work, and I started to put together what is the very beginnings of this class. And when I sat down, I was like, hmm, how do I do this? I know what I want to say, but I need to show people. Because I'm a very visual person. And I'm guessing that most photographers out there are visual people. And so my classes are a little bit different because I spend a lot of time preparing visuals for the rest of this class. Right now is the worst part about the class because I'm just talking at you. <laughs> Trust me, I understand that. Uh, we're going to have lots of pictures to look at and lots of visuals. I create all my own diagrams and illustrations to help show how everything works. So if you can see the screen, and that's why we have this monster screen here, so that I can be the weatherman in front of the screen. See, we have clear weather in Seattle, blue skies, night's fading away. Uh, so we're going to have nice big pictures here. I think this is great to have. Thanks a lot for Creative Live for bringing in the big guns for this class. All right. so. You know, whenever I get started on something brand new in life, whatever that is, new little endeavor and project, I'm sure some of, some of you out there are like, I don't think I'm going to do photography. What I always appreciate is when somebody goes, hey, John, come here. i got to tell you something. And they bring you over and they like tell you what you really got to expect. So here's what you really got to know if you're going to get into photography. If you want to become a photographer, now let's, let's say a good photographer, there's a few things that you need to know. And first off, you're going to need to really learn the fundamentals of photography. I'm not really sure where you can do this, but you should try to find a place where you can learn the fundamentals. Next up, you're going to need to learn how to operate your camera. So there's a lot of different choices in cameras out there, and there isn't just a best camera. There's a best camera for you. You need to figure out what that is, and you need to become the master of that camera with what you do. Next up. You need to learn to see like a photographer. Now, this is a little bit more difficult to teach in a class. I think section 1 and section 9 and 10 in this class will help you out in that regard. But this, this is going to take experience, going out there, shooting pictures, looking at bad results, comparing them with the good ones, and seeing what worked out. Next up, you're going to need to learn the field skills for whatever it is that you're doing. If you're going to be a wildlife photographer, you need to learn about the wildlife that you're going to shoot. If you're going to be a wedding photographer, you need to learn everything there is to know about how weddings take place and what happens and who does what and when everything is going to happen. You need to be an expert in that field. And finally, you need to get out there and practice, practice, practice. 
because there's nothing like going out there and shooting and looking at your results to get better.